Inspiring interviews with today's top landlords. This is the Rental Income Podcast. And now, Dan Lane. Back in 2014, I was trying to find a podcast to listen to where they were interviewing regular, everyday people that were buying rental properties. I wanted to hear how they got started and how they grew their portfolio and different challenges that they've run into. And I just couldn't find what I was looking for. So I decided to create the Rental Income Podcast selfishly for myself because I wanted to learn and I thought something like this would be cool to listen to. Flash forward to today, I've put out a new episode every Tuesday for the last eight years and eight years is a long time to be doing a podcast. And I wanted to do something to mark this occasion. And I was talking to Mike Rams, who's a good friend of mine, and he's been on the show a couple of times. And I wanted to see what Mike thought I should do. And Mike, you had a really good idea. Tell us what you were thinking. Well, I thought it would be interesting to chain, turn the channels or you know, switch it up a little bit. You're always asking everybody. So now it's my turn to ask you a bunch of questions. I think that would be kind of fun and put you on the spot for a while. I think that's a great idea. So today we're going to let Mike take over the podcast and interview me. So what we'll do is we'll take a quick break to thank our sponsors. We'll come right back and we'll interview Dan Lane from Northern Virginia. If you're looking for a quick and easy way to finance a rental property, reach out to Chaley Ridge from Ridge Lending Group. She has a loan program where she only cares about your deal. She doesn't need to see your pay stubs, your bank statements, or your tax returns. The only thing she's going to look at is the deal. She wants to know, does the property cash flow? If it does, she'll give you a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. Now, the rates are going to be a little bit higher than a full doc loan, but it's still a great deal. She can close quickly and there's no hassle. If you want to learn more, reach out to Chaley personally at RidgeLendingGroup.com. That's R-I-D-G-E LendingGroup.com. NMLS 42056. Rental Income Podcast. Mike, I'm really excited to kind of share my story and to see what you're going to ask me today. Before we start that, Maybe it would be helpful for for people if they kind of understood where you're coming from. So maybe can can we start off with you just giving a a real quick 20-second bio on who you are? Sure. But no, I want you to know this is all about you, not me. (laughs) (laughs) But actually, no, I enjoyed it. Um, I was started in a factory, worked a factory job, and it was good to me and all that. But I eventually wanted to be able to buy real rentals and re- own rental properties. And at around, I think I was 43 at the time, 20 some years ago, I was able to quit my job and become a full time investor. And I've not had to look back since. And how many rentals do you have today? I'm up around 63. Nice. Okay, great. Well, well, let's let's do this. I, I'm excited to see what you're going to ask me, and um, and so l- let's go ahead and and turn it over to you, and I will shift over to the guest seat here. <laughs> okay, that sounds <laughs> awesome. Well, my first question to you is, what in the world got you interested in, in starting into investing? You know, real estate is something that has always interested me. I, I've always just kind of loved the idea of a rental property. It it just makes so much sense that you buy a property, you put a tenant in there, that tenant pays you rent every month, and that rent check covers your mortgage and covers any expenses on the property and gives you a profit. And then kind of in the background, the property is appreciating and you're paying down the mortgage. It, it, It just made so much sense. But The problem I had is that where I live in Northern Virginia, it's just too expensive. The numbers just don't work. Um, To give you an example, like a a property that would maybe be a good rental property around here would be about $400,000, and that would rent for maybe $2,000 a month. And so when you look at those numbers, you know, first of all, you need uh, for a 20% down payment on a $400,000 house, that's $80,000. And then your $2,000 rent payment, that's not going to even cover the mortgage. So it it just, it, it just didn't make sense. It, it just seemed to me like following those numbers, it just seems like a recipe for bankruptcy. I, I didn't, I, I just didn't understand how people made money on rental properties. 
Uh, I fully understand that. And that leads me to my next question. And that would be, do you operate, look for, um, try to decide some type of a formula when you go to buy properties? Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm looking at the 1% rule. So, you know, if I'm going to buy a property for a hundred thousand dollars, I want it to rent for a thousand dollars a month. Now, what's been kind of cool is that as rents have appreciated here over the last couple of years, that the all my properties now are better than the one percent rule, but uh, but when I'm looking to buy a property, uh, you know I'm really kind of following that that one percent rule formula. Oh, uh, that's a good formula. I know a lot of people do that. That's that's really good. That's really good. So, okay, next question. I want to put you on the spot about. Um, you have been inside. Uh, have you been inside of any of your rooms? properties. Do you know what they're like? Yeah. You know, this is kind of funny. A lot of people think this is kind of crazy, but I have never actually been inside any of my rentals. What? <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's kind of crazy, but the way I look at it is that there's no real value that I can add by being in the property. I, I don't know anything about construction. I don't know anything about houses. I, I don't know how to fix anything that there's nothing, nothing that I can add by physically being there. So I I have a team that helps me out. So my team has been in the properties, but, but I, I haven't physically been there. So maybe, do you want me to maybe walk you through, um, one of my purchases? Yeah. Show you how I did it. I'd be interested in knowing how you buy something and then now that you bought it, what do you do next? Or do you have a property management company? Yeah. So, all right. So for, for the, the property that I'm thinking about, so I, I found this property on the MLS and I texted my realtor and I said, Hey, this property looks pretty good. It was like a three bedroom, two and a half bath place. It was in good, good shape. I mean, a very nice looking house. So I, I said, you know, this place looks good. Can you go over and take a look at it? So my realtor went over there and called me up on FaceTime and kind of walked through the house and showed me the house. And, you know, she was giving me commentary on what she liked about it or what she didn't like about it. But, you know, you can get a pretty good feel for the property over FaceTime. So after everything looked good and I I said, you know, I, I like this property, let's make an offer. She went back to her office and wrote up the office, uh, wrote up the offer, and emailed me a DocuSign contract. So I, I signed it online. She submitted it to the seller, and this the seller ended up accepting the offer. And then once we got it under contract, I had my home inspector go over, and the home inspector did a thorough inspection of the property and gave me a report with pictures and showed me everything that was wrong with the property. And we went back and forth with the seller and got a couple of things fixed. And then after I closed on the property, then my property manager went over and took a bunch of pictures and started marketing the property and showed the property to potential tenants, got the lease signed. So the the property manager kind of handles everything after the closing. So th- there really isn't anything for me to do like there's really nothing for me to physically do at the property i I really feel like i can do everything with the help of my team that is so important and i'm glad to hear you mentioned it that way because it's so important to be able to have a team um in place and um it's just the different people that you mentioned that end up will take do the work for you and be able to help you out or anybody for that matter. I mean, that is, I think so good to hear. And then your property manager, I assume also has maintenance people who can, um, if there's a problem that needs to be fixed, they can take care of that maintenance. They can take care of the yeah. kind of repairs also. Yeah. You know, I, I tell you like j- actually just the other day, um, me and you were, were having lunch with a couple of friends and, while we were at lunch, one of my tenants had a um, a problem where the none of the sinks were working in the property, and oh, like yeah, so, yeah remember yeah. that? So like my property manager texted me to tell me that they had this issue, but it was fixed. You know that 
my property manager called their plumber. The plumber went over there and fixed everything. Wasn't a big deal. Everything was taken care of. And she was just letting me know, hey, this happened, but it's been resolved. So, you know, I kind of like that, that, you know, it's like otherwise we would have been at lunch and I would have gotten a call from the tenant saying we, we have this problem and then I'd have to scramble and find a plumber and get the plumber over there. And so for me, it's it's totally worth it to pay the property manager to handle yeah, that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. Um, so I got a combo question here for you. What does your portfolio look like right now? And then uh, do you have a, a picture as to how many you want to get or have or uh, obtain, um, you know, down the road? Mm-hmm. Sure. So right now I have seven single family properties. So I, I like awesome. buying single families. Um, I not I don't have anything against duplexes or fourplexes or e- even a small apartment building. But like all the deals that I've just come across have been single family properties, and I I, I really like the idea of a single family that you know my tenants generally tend to stay for a long time. Um, we get you know, we, we get really good tenants. Single families are just easy to buy. You need a small down payment to get into a house. And it, uh, you also have a couple of different exit strategies. So if you wanted to sell at some point, you can sell to an investor who's probably going to want a discount, but you can probably sell quickly or you can fix the property up and maybe sell it to a owner occupant that's going to pay you more. So I, I kind of like that where, if you buy a 10 unit apartment building, the only person that's going to buy that is an investor and they're going to want a deal. So, um, yeah. So I, so for, for that reason, I I like single families, but like I said, I, 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 I'm, I'm not stuck on single families. I I like all real estate and, and (laughs) you know, if the numbers worked, I would definitely consider anything. So, um, as far as, a goal on like a number of rentals I want to get to, you know, I, I really don't have a number, you know, it's, um, for me, it, it's about the journey more than the destination that, you know, I just really love rental properties and, um, you know, I, I love finding deals and I, I love, I I love everything about it. So (laughs) I, I think that if, if I were to, set a goal and say, you know, I want to get a hundred properties. I I feel like once I got there, like I'm not going to be content. I I don't think that's going to change my life in Mm -hmm. any way. I I think I'm probably going to want 110 once Mm -hmm. I get to a hundred. So I, I don't, I I don't really see an end goal for me. I just really enjoy the journey of owning rental properties. Oh, I like that idea. I like that a lot. But with that being said, I have to ask, do you have an extra strategy? I mean, are you going to keep on buying properties until you're uh, in the grave or what? Yeah, you know, that that's a good question. I I, I really don't see a time r- right now. And, you know, who knows? Maybe when I'm 80, maybe I'll think about this differently. But, but as of right now, I don't ever see a time when I wouldn't want to own rental property. So yeah, I think I'm always going to need income and I love the income that the rental properties generate. Mm. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I, I really don't, I, I don't see myself getting out of this at any point. Now I, I know, you know, you're, you're a little bit older than me and, and I, I know that this is something that, that you, you think about from time to time. Like, have you figured out like what your exit strategy is? Not to oh, not to hijack you your interview, you. but this is all about you. About <laughs> <me>. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So, I bottom line, I, I um, I I don't have an exit strategy, and I I don't know. I I really don't. I, I don't really see a time when I wouldn't wouldn't want to own rental properties. Maybe at some point I maybe, you know, in 20 years, my properties will be a lot older and maybe I'll want to do a 1031 exchange at some point and exchange mm-hmm. them for newer properties. But I, I feel like I'm going to always own rental properties. Okay. I, I understand that. That's for sure. I understand that. Okay. One more question I'd like to ask you before we take off. Um, 
because uh, your sounds like you got things going in the right direction and all of that. But uh, for people who don't have any any properties or very little or whatever, on the average, how much time would you say you put into your investment? Do you would you say this is the equivalent of a forty hour workday or a uh, week or, or are you uh, how much time do you normally spend or something on your rentals you know honestly it's very little time i mean it, it might be it, it's it, it's not like i sit down and say okay i'm gonna work on my rentals for an hour right now it's it's a few minutes here and there um you know i might log on to the property manager's portal and make sure that everyone's paid rent or you know the occasional text message when when, when something has gone on or maybe there's an email I have to respond to. Um, but yeah, they, they're really, it really doesn't take much time. If I were to put a number on it, it's maybe 20 minutes a month. Wow. Yeah, man. That's, that's, that's awesome. And you have, I think you said seven, eight properties, yeah, seven, 20, yep. 28, 20 minutes um, a month. I mean, Jesus, Pete, uh, I think even a, uh, uh, somebody with a full-time job, two full-time jobs and a kid running around should be able to take oh, care of absolutely. Like that. Absolutely. Yeah. It's all about getting the right property manager. I mean, if, if you yeah. have a bad property manager and you know, I, I've had a bad property manager and that is, um, that that's a nightmare, but if you get a really good manager, it, it really isn't that much work to manage some awesome. rental properties. Yeah. That, that might be a discussion for another time, but yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. That's great. That's great. So that's all you well, got? Man, that's, that's that's all I got for you. Any, yes, I think you did pretty good, buddy. Any questions about the podcast? Oh, yes. I'm so sorry. I was supposed to ask, I wanted to ask you about that. I totally forgot. I get, I get excited about rental <laughs> Um But yeah, you, did have, you do have this podcast, and um, I'm able to listen to it quite often, actually. <clears throat> but my question to you, um, how did you, what made you think you decided to get started on your podcast? You know, it, it was because I wanted to learn about rental properties. I, I you know, I, I loved the idea of rental properties and I, I didn't know anybody that owned rentals and everybody that I came in contact with that had anything that, that knew maybe more than me or had any knowledge of rentals. It was all really negative. And Mike, I, I don't know, maybe you've seen this where you talk to someone. It feels like I, I feel like everyone has an uncle that owns rental properties and things didn't go well. Or maybe someone has a, a friend that owned owned a rental and their property got trashed. So like that that's what I was hearing. You know, I, everyone that I talked to was really negative on real estate. And I um I just I wanted to hear from people that were being successful. I wanted to hear from the guy that was making fifteen thousand dollars a month. I wanted to figure out how he got there so that I could get there. So th that's really why I started the show. That's a great idea as far as being able to. Uh, I mean, I love thinking out. I love hearing people thinking out outside the box. You do a great job with that, Dan. And in our conversations we've had as friends. I mean, thinking of, and I would have never have thought to have my own podcast, but that <laughs> yeah. is super being able to think out of the box and actually not hearing just the negative side, but actually hearing good positive side yeah. about it all. So and, you know, it's, it's like hearing the negative sometimes is good. And, you know, was occasionally we'll have people on that have had bad experiences. And, you know, I, I definitely can learn from those, those experiences too. Yeah, but I, I just, know. I love... I just love hearing about people that are just doing really cool things with rentals. And it's just, it's so inspiring that, that you, this doesn't have to be your full-time job. I mean, you can work full-time and own rentals and, you know, as you grow your portfolio, maybe you can replace your W2 income. And we've, we've had a lot of people on the show that have done that. And it's just, it, it's just so inspiring j just to hear yeah. what people have done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, any advice for somebody who's just interested in wanting to get started in rentals? Any any advice for anybody? Um, you know, I I think I think the most important thing that people can do is find a local RIA club. Uh, these these are like real estate oh, investment very good, very clubs. Good. 
Um, you know, I, I just, I, I think that if you go to these clubs and you, you meet other local investors, you're going to find deals, you're going to find opportunities and you're going to make friends. I mean, Mike, you, you and I met at a RIA club uh, exactly. many years ago. And, and, um, you know, I, I think the mistake some people make is that they go to a RIA club and they maybe just go once or twice. I, I think you got to become a regular, you, you got to get to know everybody that's there and just start to become friends with people. And as you become friends, it's going to lead to opportunities. So yeah, 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 that would yeah. be my biggest advice is just, just get involved in your local community. I think you hit it on the nail on the head, getting look, getting involved because buying the first one or two places is always the hardest thing yep. in getting started. Yep. But once you get, once you start buying one or two, then people start knowing who you are, like you say, through the RIAs. And then people start understanding that, Hey, I can get more here. This person has this idea. This person has this idea. And people just are bringing you the idea, but it's the idea of getting started. Absolutely. And I think the re is an awesome idea. Awesome idea. So, well, Dan, I think I covered everything. Awesome. So now I'm an expert because of listening to you now. So I appreciate <laughs> it. Awesome. Well, Mike, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate you, you taking over. And uh, before we wrap things up, I just want to give a big thank you to our sponsor today. It's Chaley Ridge from Ridge London Group. If you're looking to buy a rental property, whether you're just getting started or you want to add to your portfolio, definitely reach out to Chaley. She's a nationwide lender and her specialty is helping investors finance rental properties. She has a ton of different loan programs and she can find something customized to you for your situation. If you want to find out more, just reach out to Chaley at RidgeLendingGroup.com. That's R I D G E lendinggroup.com nmls42056 thank you so much for checking out the podcast today make sure you follow the show we put out new episodes every single tuesday and if you're following you'll get notified as soon as the next episode comes out my name is dan lane and this has been the rental income podcast